welcome back. In this section, we are going to start tackling equilibrium. We're going to learn about some structures, and then we will also talk a little bit about rotational or angular equilibrium as well. So, when we're talking equilibrium, we are using something that is generally known as the vestibular apparatus, which is more than just the vestibule. So the vestibular apparatus really isn't a bony labyrinth structure, it's membranous labyrinth structures, things inside membranous labyrinth. So it's going to involve the three semicircular ducts plus the two membranous structures inside the vestibule, vestibule, so the utricle and the staccule. And each one of these structures has an area that contains sensory receptors. And of course the names are different for everything. And the brain is going to be using all the input we get from all those sensors. And it is going to try to pair it up with what we're getting from our sense of vision to see if it can make sense with it. It's also going to bring in input from your proprio receptors as well. And your body will automatically be making positional adjustments, try to keep you in balance all day long. So when we're talking about equilibrium, we're going to be talking about two main categories. And the two main categories don't have to do with all of this is one and all of this is the other. That would be too easy. The first is called static equilibrium. So static means something's not changing. So this has to do with when your head is in one position. For instance, you're sitting there texting for a long time. Or you've got your head leaning. Okay. Or you're looking up at the stars all night long. But we're not talking your head moving, we're talking your head being in one position, that's static equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium has to do with perceiving motion or a change in speed, like acceleration when you push on the gas. And there's a couple of different types of acceleration. The first type is when you're in a straight line, like your head is tilting, you're riding in the car, like I talked about, stepping on the gas, or they accelerating when you take off in an airplane. The other type is angular, which has to do with your rotating your head around or you're leaning over. So looking at the rotational equilibrium structures, all those angles are going to be related to the three semicircular ducts. So that kind of makes sense. The circles are going to have to do with circular movements. Okay. In contrast to the to, the gravitational equilibrium, the linear accelerations, those angular movements, that static stuff, that's all related to the utricle and saccule, which are inside the vestibule. So to refresh your memory, for rotational equilibrium, we're going to have three semicircular canals. And it's not important that you learn that they're called the posterior, the superior, the horizontal, the anterior, the whatever three semicircular canals and let's go look at the distal end because that distal end has a swelling which we haven't talked about before and inside that distal swelling you see this thing here that looks like a purple little barbell a little weight for you to lift and that basically is the shape of the area that contains the mechanoreceptors and attached to this, you can see the vestibular nerve exiting this. And in this picture, you clearly can see the vestibular nerve joining up with the cochlear nerve from the cochlea, which we've already talked about. And then those two together are going to form the vestibular cochlear nerve. So looking at the distal swelling, that is the ampulla. And the ampulla is going to have to do with the angular acceleration. So in the ampulla, the first thing I want you to notice is there's this area that has this elevated area where we have the epithelium covering it and then we have these other cells. Yes, hair cells again. Okay. So with special senses, it's gonna be very easy. With a tongue, it's a taste cell, but anywhere else it's a hair cell. And so those hair cells have stereocilia and they have that really long kinocilium as well. And just like in hearing, they're going to be embedded in a gelatinous matrix. But this is nothing like 
that tactorial membrane. This looks like a soft serve ice cream cone. And that structure is known as the cupola. And so if you notice, all those stereocilia are completely embedded in the cupola. The cupola is not just at the tops of them like they were on the tectorial membrane. They're completely embedded in the cupola. So let's do some rotating. So when your head moves, the solid structures are moving. Now recall, there's endolymph inside the semicircular duct. So the ampulla is moving, the cupola is moving, the semicircular ducts are moving. All of that is moving, but for a nanosecond, the fluid has lagged behind because it wasn't a solid structure. It actually took the whoosh of the solid movement to get the fluid to start moving. And so that slight lag of the fluid causes this little bending of the stereocilia. And depending which way it bends, that either increases the stimulation or it decreases the stimulation. And then your brain interprets what's happening. After about 30 seconds, not only are the hard surfaces moving, but the endolymph is moving with it. And so no messages are being sent to your brain because everything is hunky-dory. Then what happens is the hard stuff stops. You stop suddenly. But is this stopping suddenly? Does the fluid stop suddenly? Oh no, the fluid keeps on moving. The cupola is still moving in the original direction and this is not moving. So the stereocilia are going to start bending and you start getting messages to your brain all over again. However, your eyes know now you're not spinning anymore. You're getting a message, we're spinning, we're spinning. Your eyes are saying we're not spinning and then that makes you do the old, oh the dizziness of feeding the fishes if you're on that whale watching um, offshore. So yeah, that conflicting message to the brain, that's kind of a bad thing. All right, so that's it for this part and I will come back shortly with the last part of equilibrium.